What's up guys? Hey, Jared Beckstrand here, doctor of physical therapy, tonatitan.com. Do you have a tight hip with pain that shoots down your leg? You might have what we call a piriformis syndrome. Today, I wanted to talk to you all about piriformis syndrome, what it is, why you get it, and specifically, most importantly, about eight things that you can do right now at home to eliminate yours. Let's get into it right now. All right, so what exactly is sciatica? Now, sciatica is an umbrella term that we typically use for irritation to the sciatic nerve. Your, your nerves come down your spinal cord, they come down your back, and they exit out at each of various levels. Now, those lowest nerves in your back, they come out of your lower back, and they kind of come together to form three major nerves that are then wrapped in a big old sheath, and then that's what travels down your leg. So it's, those collection, uh, it's that collection of those three nerves wrapped in that common sheath that travels down your leg that we refer to as the sciatic nerve. Now, sciatica is a symptom, not a diagnosis. And so if you go into the doctor and the doctor says, well, yeah, you have sciatica, that is simply describing that nerve pain that you're experiencing down your leg. Why is it there? That's the diagnosis. That's the thing that we want to really get to the bottom of. Why do you have that sciatic nerve pain or that sciatica? Now, the three main causes that I see, probably the most common cause that I see, is going to be a bulge disc or a herniated disc or just disc irritation. Things like that are what I hear a lot of in my physical therapy clinic. Um, if that's the case, if that's your case, I actually shot a video on some great things that you can do for a herniated disc or a bulge disc. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description below. Also click on this one right up here. That's the link to get to that video. If you have a herniated disc, that's the best treatment for those. Second most common cause that I see of sciatica would be disc deterioration or disc degeneration or also termed as DDD for degenerative disc disease, sometimes also referred to as stenosis can be another cause of or another symptom of that disc degeneration. If you know that you have those things, I'm going to leave the links to another video. Again, check the description out. Check this link right here if you have that disc degeneration. Those are going to be the best treatment for you. But now okay, here we go. What if you actually have this piriformis tightness or this piriformis syndrome? Uh, let's talk first of all about exactly what that is. And so if I grab my spine model here, um, your, your pelvis is made up of three bones. And so you've got basically two on either side and one in the middle right here. You have a muscle, so the piriformis muscle attaches to the inside part of your tailbone, kind of right in this area. It goes across the hip bone, across the hip joint, and it attaches, you've kind of got, you know, your hip ball and socket sits out here, and that muscle attaches into that outside of that bone on that side. And so it kind of takes this oblique course across the, across the lower back. And so, Again, here's my, here's my tailbone right here, and so from that inside border of that sacrum out to, you can feel that bone on the side of your hip, it comes right through that course right there. Now, the anatomy is important because, again, those lowest nerves in your back, there we go, those lowest nerves in your back that come together to form that sciatic nerve, they actually exit right in that area. Some of them actually go under that piriformis. So if here's my piriformis muscle, that sciatic nerve goes right underneath it. In some rare cases, that sciatic nerve even bifurcates or even goes through that piriformis muscle. And so any tightness in that piriformis can actually cause sciatic nerve symptoms because of that irritation. And so specifically, that's what we refer to when we talk about piriformis sim syndrome. Tightness in the piriformis that impinges on your sciatic nerve that causes those radiating pains down into your leg. Now, what causes some of this piriformis syndrome? I'd say the most common causes that I see are people who spend a lot of time seated, and so the more we sit, the more constant and prolonged pressure is going to be in that area that can pinch upon that nerve. If you sit all day, especially on a wallet, and so if I had a wallet underneath here and I spent all day sitting on that, 
oftentimes that can be a cause of this uh, piriformis syndrome, just that prolonged pressure from that. Uh, people who sit a lot with their legs crossed, so if I sat all day long like this, all of a sudden my hip is in this externally rotated position, there's some tension on that, uh, on, there's some increased pull through that piriformis muscle, increased pressure on that sciatic nerve, that's another common symptom that I see. Um, pregnancy, you ladies who may have some of these radiating symptoms down your leg, if it's not coming from from a disc or your uh, sciatic or your uh, sacroiliac joint or your SI joint, a lot of times it can be from this piriformis muscle. I'm going to bring my wife in here in just a second. She can tell you all about uh, pregnancy in this in this piriformis syndrome. And then um, weakness is another thing. If you've got weak glutes, if you've got weak uh, glute max, glute med, glute min, if you got weak piriformis, those can all be actually causes of this piriformis syndrome too. Okay, enough of this chit chat. So now you guys have a good understanding of what it is. I I hope you have a good understanding of why you get it. What I want to run through now are some of my most commonly recommended fixes for it. Actually, the best thing to do, I, I recommend to people all the time in my physical therapy clinic, is to take a three-fold approach to this. And so we've got to alleviate the tension, and so we're going to do that via massage. I'm going to show you some self-massage techniques, some stretches, and so again, I'm just going to show you about oh, four or five stretches that you can do to stretch out that tight piriformis. And then finally, we've got to strengthen that if it is a muscle weakness issue. So I've got a couple of home exercises you can do to also strengthen and that piriformis, uh, that piriformis muscle up. So let's get into those right now. All right, so once again, I brought in my lovely assistant to help demonstrate some of these exercises to you guys. We're gonna start first with the massage techniques to that piriformis. Now, massage is a great way I mean, with any muscle, if you're tight and if you have knots in that muscle, massage is a great way to alleviate those. And so I wanted to show you a couple of my favorite massage techniques. But keep in mind, the cause of this pain is that piriformis is tight on that sciatic nerve. In order to massage that piriformis, we have to actually kind of increase pressure on it. And so it's not uncommon for this to increase some of your symptoms. If it's unbearable, <laughs> she's already got the, we tried the tennis ball just barely, we'll get there. If it's unbearable, you guys, not important. Spend some time stretching it out instead. However, if you can tolerate it, some of these piriformis release techniques are going to be great a great way to help alleviate some of that tension. Okay, so to get into this foam roller, I like a foam roller because it's bigger. It kind of disperses the force a little more evenly. If you guys don't have a foam roller, we're on ours all the time. We we're just all the time. <laughs> we're just talking about how she was just on it this morning. My and legs. so I'm going to leave another link in the description to this video. If you do need a foam roller, check out that link. That's my favorite one. And so what Camille's going to do, if it were her left piriformis, she's going to sit on the foam roller, she's going to cross her left leg, other way, left leg over her <laughs> right to roll out that left side, right hand is on her ankle, left hand goes down on the floor back behind her, and now we've got that left piriformis on stretch in this externally rotated position. And then what she can proceed to do is kind of roll forward and backward, she can roll her pelvis this way and that way kind of find and identify those areas that you're super tight, and then that's where we want to spend a little bit of time foam rolling. What I recommend here is about 60 seconds worth. You can even kind of find that trigger point and just leave it there for a 60 seconds until that trigger point kind of melts away. <laughs> Again, if there's any pain or reproduction of symptoms down your legs, that's indicative that you're actually aggravating that sciatic nerve. We might want to back off of this for now. That's number one, so the foam roller I like. Now, again, talking about surface area, foam roller is a lot bigger. There's a much bigger surface area for that. If you want something a little more aggressive, a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball can also do the trick. What she can do is just sneak that under her butt, again, right on that piriformis muscle, and a lot of times, even that is gonna be pretty intense. And so again, she's kind of just supporting herself with her hands and with her feet. You roll around on that piriformis, you find those areas of knots and those areas of tightness, and again, that's where I want you to stay. If you can, you knew it was coming, yeah. you can also cross that left leg over that right leg again, put that muscle on stretch, and then roll it around and find areas of tension that way. Again, about 60 seconds of these massage techniques are what I recommend. All right, so we've been through some of those self-massage techniques to hopefully loosen up some of those some of those uh, knots that you may be experiencing in that muscle. Let's show you now some good ideas or some good options on how to stretch it out. I'm going to show you four stretches. They're going to go kind of easiest to hardest or kind of least intense to most intense. 
again, depending on how bad yours is irritated, depending on your hip mobility, hopefully I show you something that's going to help you out. And so Camille, we've got her laying down up here. What she's going to do in order to stretch out this left piriformis muscle, I'm going to have her straighten out her right leg. And then all she's going to do is give this left knee a big hug. She's going to pull it up towards her chest. Now, if she takes her left knee and actually pulls it over towards her right shoulder, we introduce a little bit of what we call horizontal adduction, and that's going to help to just increase that distance or put a little more stretch on that muscle. So that's your first version of your piriformis stretch. Take your knee, whichever leg is affected, and pull it over to your opposite shoulder. Now, if that's pretty easy, if you don't get too much of a stretch with that, the next level would be she's going to come out of that, bend both of your knees, now she's going to cross her left leg over her right. Her hands come down right around the back of her leg. Now what she's doing is she's pulling this right knee straight up into her right shoulder, but we're not stretching that right side. Again, it's this one right over here. So now we just increase the degree of that external rotation until she gets more of a stretch through that piriformis muscle. That's number two. Now if that's still pretty easy, or if you have even more hip mobility than that, she's going to get up into what we call a pigeon pose in yoga. And so again, just a deep hip rotator stretch um, to get into it. So again, we're going to stretch out her left leg. She's going to bring her left leg in front of her into kind of this 90 degree position. So she's got about a 90 degree bend at her knee, and then her right leg is going to go straight back behind her. So now all of a sudden we get the weight of her body, gravity acting straight down, that's causing this hip to rotate even more to put even more of a stretch on that piriformis muscle. Again, this one's probably the most intense if you are limited in your hip mobility. Like, I, there's a reason I brought her into this. I <laughs> kind of can't get into this position because I have some tight hip rotators. And so this is probably the most aggressive, but if you can get into it, it's also a great way to stretch out that piriformis muscle. Okay, go ahead and get out of that. And now, um, again, I mentioned in the introduction to this video, one of the most common causes of this pain, or a lot of the, the pain that I see a lot of times in my clinic, would be pregnancy and pregnant women. Now, the three stretches that I just showed you, it's kind of difficult to get into that if you do have, you know, a Child. pregnant belly going on. Case in point, you kind of had the sciatica thing going yes. on with our last so bad. two pregnancies, at least. It might have three. been. Okay, so the last okay, three, so. we've got yep. four kids. Three out of the four have she had this sciatic nerve pain with. Yep. A lot of it was due to that piriformis muscle tightness. So this is how we stretched it out with her. This is a little easier to get into with the pregnancy. And so she would take her leg, again, the one that's affected, mm -hmm. and all you've got to do is stand at the edge of your bed, your kitchen table. Couches are a little bit too low. Hopefully your bed's high enough. Some type of platform that's about this high. She would bring her leg up into this position. And now with a nice straight back, she's going to lean forward until she feels a stretch come back up out of that. If she was to simply round forward, she can obviously go a lot further, but a lot of that motion is coming from her upper back. Keep in mind that it's in the hips that we want to be moving. And so keep your back nice and flat and then just lean forward on this. And again, she's a pro at this. this she, she did this one quite a bit again yep. with our pregnancies. So again, four options for stretches. Again, the goal being to alleviate some of that tension of that piriformis muscle that's that's pushing down on your sciatic nerve. Okay, so the last thing we want to do, so if you'll get back up here, again, sorry on your left side, she's, she's working hard on this one. Guys. <laughs> and so the last thing we want to do is introduce some strengthening exercises to that piriformis muscle. So just some muscle activation in that area, promote blood flow into that spot, help it to release and relax a little bit more, also to promote strength in that spot to alleviate some of the tension, some of the stress in there. The easiest thing to do is Camille's going to roll over onto her left side. Let's say, for example, it was her right leg that was affected. And then with both of her knees bent, we're going to do what we call a clamshell exercise. So that piriformis is a hip rotator. And so how we activate it is to go through hip rotation. With both knees bent, she's laying on her left side. And what she's going to do is keep her feet together, separate her knees. So her right knee is going to pull up towards me and then come back down. Again, we call these clamshells in the physical therapy clinic because you get this opening and closing. Again, if it's her right leg that's affected, this is working that right piriformis as she's going through this external rotation motion. Typically what I recommend to people is three sets of 10 on this, and then you're going to repeat that at least once a day, twice a day if you can tolerate it. 
I don't think I mentioned anything about my stretches. My stretches, I'll typically hold each one for 20 seconds, repeat that three times, and then the stretches you can also do a couple times a, a day as well. So about 60 seconds on each of those stretches twice a day. So clamshells is your strength exercise number one. Strength exercise number two, she's gonna get up here onto all fours and a little bit more aggressive as now we're kind of going a little bit harder against gravity, she's gonna do what we call a well, we call it a quadruped hip external rotation. <laughs> How lame is that? It's called a fire hydrant, you guys. And so a fire hydrant exercise, again, down here on all fours, and then she's gonna take her bent leg, keeping her hip at 90, keeping her knee at 90, and then she's gonna raise that right knee up towards the ceiling and then slowly lower it back down. Again, we're promoting that external rotation motion in the hip, that's causing that piriformis muscle to fire. That's exercise number two. Again, a little bit more aggressive than your first one. If you can tolerate clamshells, you might try this. If this is too aggressive, go back to your clamshells. And again, about three sets of 10 on those exercises. How are you feeling? Great. That piriformis so is like stretched. completely, completely <laughs> healed. She's cured. It's I a miracle. Great. Hey, you guys, I hope you found this um, beneficial. Again, my goal here was to show you some exercises that you can do to treat piriformis syndrome at home. Um, hope you found it, again, hope you found it beneficial. If you did, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button down below and say thank you so much for those likes that you guys give me. That really means a lot. Also, if you haven't done so already, subscribe to Tone and Titan here on YouTube. My goal is to basically help you guys to be the healthiest, fittest versions of yourself. I hope you subscribe to this channel. I hope that we can kind of fulfill that goal together. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Be sure to share this video if you know anybody who might benefit from this information. And we'll see you right back here on Tone and Titan next time.